Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy George. Today I'd like to review hot topics in non-advanced systemic mastocytosis. So one question that I get asked about a lot is why is the bone marrow biopsy not sufficient? So there's many different reasons for this. This is a manual procedure, requires a lot of technical expertise. You have to get a bone marrow aspirate, which is cellular and contains particles. Um, often what I see is that the bone marrow aspirate lacks particles and is hemodilute, meaning it just shows peripheral blood. If you don't have the bone marrow, you can't examine mast cells to look at their morphology. The other issue is the bone marrow biopsy. In order for a bone marrow biopsy to be considered adequate, it really needs to be at least one centimeter in length. Too often, what I see are very small bone marrow biopsies, which are insufficient to evaluate the bone marrow. If you don't have enough to look at, or if there is significant artifact in the biopsy, you won't be able to look for those dense mast cell aggregates. And if you don't have a mast cell aggregate, then obviously you can't look um, for different phenotypes in mast cells as assessed by immunohistochemistry, and you won't be able to have an accurate assessment of the mast cell burden in the bone marrow biopsy. So it's very important to have a, a skilled practitioner who's used to doing bone marrow aspirates and biopsies perform this procedure. In addition, when you're doing a bone marrow aspirin and biopsy, you need to get enough sample to send for ancillary testing. This includes sending the bone marrow aspirin for flow cytometry, uh, cytogenetics, and often molecular genetic studies as well. So making sure that you've got a good pathology lab is important. The next hot topic I'd like to address is the sensitivity of the kit assay. And so this is very important. We have a number of different molecular techniques that we can use to assess whether the kit D816V mutation is present and the quantitation of the kit D816V mutation. If you're doing a Sanger sequencing assay, that has only a sensitivity of about 20%. So if you have less than 20% mast cells, it's likely that you'll get a false negative. The next uh, frequent assay that I see perform is next generation sequencing. Very common um, and very accurate, but again, the sensitivity depending on the laboratory is maybe two to 3%. So what that means is that if you have a very minor burden of mast cells in the bone marrow, you, you again may get a false negative. This is why the NCCN guidelines recommend doing a high sensitivity assay for KIT. High sensitivity assays include digital droplet PCR and allele specific uh, PCR. And these assays have enough sensitivity, 0.03%, uh, even down to 0.01%, that we can be confident whether we're detecting the KIT D816B mutation or not. Now, not all PCR assays are created the same, so you need to check with your laboratory um, or your reference laboratory what is the sensitivity of the assay. And also, not all PCR assays are quantitative. Some are qualitative, which give you a yes or no answer, while others are quantitative where you can get a variant allele frequency. And it's much preferred to do a quantitative PCR assay of high sensitivity. And this is very helpful in detecting KIT. And remember, you can detect KIT in blood or bone marrow. Again, there's probably 15% of cases where the blood may be negative but the bone marrow is actually positive for the KIT D816V assay. And again, that's related to the amount of mast cells in the bone marrow biopsy. So you may have cases with less than 5% uh, mast cells in the bone marrow biopsy, but it's still ISM. And those might be cases where the blood will be negative, but the bone marrow is positive. So again, if you use a high sensitivity assay, the peripheral blood, and it's negative, but you have a very high suspicion for systemic mastocytosis, it's recommended to perform the high sensitivity assay on the bone marrow. Please subscribe to Exchange CME's YouTube channel and check back frequently for more information about systemic mastocytosis.